Good evening, I'm Zara Gennato and welcome to my studio. I'm live tonight. Well, I was, live, I was alive last night, but uh, just wasn't able to broadcast. But I am able to broadcast tonight. Good evening. Nearly. Okay, right. Yes. And, uh, uh, okay, right. So, let's do a little bit with this. And there you go, all the way to the edge there. So I'm going to do some shading. Then we'll see if we can get some dots in. And we'll make that a light colour. Uh, yeah, and we need to darken that a little bit around there. So, good evening everybody. Welcome. Sorry, I'm a little bit sort of confusolated. Yeah, that probably explains it quite well. Why does it feel like I've got a pencil behind me? I don't know, it's probably because I've had a pencil behind me here all day today. Oh, I don't know, I've been putting up shelves. and working out the intricacies of how people apply plasterboard to walls. For some reason it really looks like a haircut. Um, okay, and I want... do I want? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I want. A little bit of darkness around here. <coughs> so we want some darkness around there as well, but we'll look at that at some other point. Thank you. 
So I was still thinking about the... Uh, that must be even darker. Um, still thinking about the light sources, where the light's coming from. That is vitally important to shading. I am trying to get a light source, which is kind of your view, directly down from the camera. Ish. It's kind of like a torch from in front, but kind of not quite. It is sort of, um, but it's slightly offset because of uh, shades. And I suppose that could be, if it's like that, that could be his shadow of his head. But then one has to wait not on that side. It's sort of a slightly offset thing. Maybe you're holding the torch in your right hand. You are facing this fella, aren't you? Because if not, you're going to be mighty surprised in a few seconds' time. Now that looks better. Right, now I need to do that on that side. Quite a large white patch there. Hmm, thought occurs to me if you have rim lighting, do you have rim darkness as well? Hmm. Don't know the answer to that. I did say room lighting, not ring lighting, which is a real company. Which for some reason, oh I know why, yes. But say for some reason reminds me I want to have a play with some uh, ESP, uh, potentially some ESP32s, A266s as well. I want to try putting them in pair mode so they just talk to each other. Might reduce the, the power draw on my doorbell. Because I'd love to get the battery up to closer to a year. At the moment it runs for about four months on the lithium-ion battery. Can't really say how long because I've only charged it once since I installed it. But the prediction is about four months. that's running on Wi-Fi which is quite power hungry so if I could get one talking to another one of itself it's got roughly the same range so I can put I can put a receiver quite near to the Wi-Fi access point and get the and get it to talk to that and that appears to take about a tenth of the power which could be good. I 
powerful battery. Right. Let's shed down this side as well. Yeah, oh, that's the hard bit of the wood that doesn't want to take colour. That's going to be fun in a minute. I'm going to try and darken this down. So you should probably be darker still. Let's take that darker still. Easy when doing something like a leopard, for example, uh, to concentrate very much on the dots, on the spots, and forget altogether that you need to shade the body uh, in order to get the three dimension, uh, the dimensionality to it, to make it look three D. Now, I've never done a pyrographed leopard before. But it's something which kind of applies to everything. And something as um, obvious as a leopard, the temptation really is to concentrate on those spots. And all the spots really do, well they do two jobs actually for, for paragraph artists. Um, they tell you it's a leopard. And if you use them right, they can help with the dimensionality and make it look 3D. But uh, if you haven't realised that at the start, well, I haven't realised that, then a lot of people 
we'll just concentrate on the dots. And uh, then you lose that. It looks like a flat, a flat picture that you've drawn dots on, not like a real leopard. I mean, does this look like a real leopard? Nah, I don't know, but uh, it's a good representation of a real leopard. At least I think so. And uh, part of that is you've got to get the sh get the shades shading first. So that it's the shade that gives you that uh, three-dimensional look. You can tell where things are in front of other things, where um, where the curves are. You can then use the dots to enhance that by using uh, again the right shape of dots. So when dots are on the side, they're very much sort of thin, sort of line looking things like these here. When they're on the front, they're more dot shaped. Now that's interesting because I just thought now, <clears throat> having seen it sort of a precursor to it, I could actually sort of imply dots in, in the dark shadows here by using this tool. I'm getting a rim lighting effect which I don't want. I don't know what it is, but right here against the edge, it's coming out slightly lighter. When you get an awkward bit of wood like this, you have to basically keep going over it. It will cook eventually, but you have to sort of finagle it and uh, concentrate really on getting all of it to an even tone. And that does sometimes mean using the tool in very odd sorts of directions and things like that. And again, up on the toe to sort of just get into small crevices and things like that. That still wants to be wider still. But we can take this in stages as we are doing. Now then, what I'm going to do actually is bring that out there like that. Now to do a bit of blending.
There is kind of a style of art that would be blocky-ish, where you you keep these transitions that are visible here. Um, so it kind of looks a little bit like painting by numbers, with quite uh, but colour changes. But I don't like it too much. So I don't want mine to look like that. Yeah, so it's come out probably to about there, I think, probably all the way down. Might have to do the same on the other side as well. This is a hard shadow, so that kind of does suggest it is kind of like the muzzle, perhaps. Um, mm. I think I'm playing about a little bit with the light sources, a bit too much here, or rather I'm sort of cheating. Um, playing fast and loose with the light sources. But whilst it looks right, I'm not going to bother about it. <laughs> Kind of shoot could follow that slightly like that. Now, the more this is producing like a yellow tone to me. Quite sure why it should look yellow, but it is. It's probably, um, probably my brain converting. Wonderful thing, brains, but you can sometimes trick them and confuse them, especially with colours. You can effectively make colour based optical illusions. Now that's going to be the lightest of that that could go, so I'm going to have to make this darker in order for it to be a contrast. I do need to be bolder sometimes with shades. 
I am often very sort of timid with the shading and make things much too light. That's a plus me in there, I've gone a bit too dark. Really hard actually, so maybe I haven't gone a bit too dark, but it's kind of, which is quite difficult sometimes to hit intermediate colours. of course I also want the lighting here to give me a sort of a really dark corner but one that I'll fade out across the leg I suspect that does need to be wider We often draw shadows as black, but a lot of the time they're not. Not even when we think they're black, like sort of direct sunlight. They are often just dark colour. And it's just the contrast between things that makes us see them as black. But it does mean that if you um, are doing an image, and you make your shadows black. It don't always work. So shadow is a lack of light on on something. And that something doesn't change colour just because there's a lack of light on it, it's still the same colour. And the back just means it's not illuminated enough. So your shadows are the same colour as the object that they're on. Just a darker version of it. Come on, wood cook.
Yeah, it's, that's a car area, car dark area on there. It's dark, but not as dark. And then come further out again, making that dark, but not as dark, until we've gradually got it all applied. better. This is still much too white but it looks better. Okay, so what I really need to do now is to come over this with that light yellow colour that you can't see on camera but you will be able to see the effect of it. This is an exercise of knocking that bright white off. So there's a slight yellowish tint being applied here. Uh, I'm also smoothing down the wood surface, which changes how it reflects light. 
All in all, it will have the effect of taking away the bright light, bright white look that was there previously. Now I'm going in big ovals here. The reason being is I don't stop and start the end of each line if I go backwards and forwards. Because that would have a tendency to create a blob. By going in sort of loops, circle-ish things, and moving slightly, uh, I can cover the surface and I don't get uh, blobs uh, because I don't stop at the end of lines and I also uh, should in theory get a more smoother overall colour Now this is getting a really, really, really light tone. In fact, to some extent it looks grey. So maybe the tone it's getting, but it's getting one. Which is what I want. The problem with doing really light turns like this is you can't always see where you've been. Oh indeed if you've got complete coverage. And still that you, you can need it to be darker. I don't want it to be darker, therefore I've got a problem. So I just guess. And it is always possible that the camera view, the one that you're watching at the moment, will give me a, an indication if I'm missing places. Yeah, that's been, that one's been called in, so now that and that look different to me. And it possibly looks like they're different to you as well. Cup of tea. I only have one tea bag left after this, so I'm making sure I drink it. I like Earl Grey tea, so I'll have to get some more. Now then, let's do this side as well. And I can afford for this edge to be slightly darker. Not quite a perfect shadow. I know, let's do some more work on that. This is effectively at some point was a knot in the wood before it was cut into a veneer uh, and glued together here. And uh, those sorts of areas do change the uh, paragraphic properties.
are you doing this? I, I can't easily see where I've gone. Um, I can see an effect. Uh, so I'm being really subtle with a colour change like this, but... It's only when it's sort of complete can I actually sort of see a difference. But this level here, as I'm working on this, not really seeing a difference by what I'm doing. It's sort of my eyes are not quite sure they're seeing it. Kind of a weird bit of feeling at the moment, but I'll go over that. And I find the perfect angle. Keep trying to find because as you move, of course, the uh, the pen angle changes. I'm trying to find the perfect angle where this pen glides smoothly. At the moment, I can feel it scratching the edge slightly. Um, I'm not sure where which edge it's scratching, but it's catching and scratching at the wood slightly. I'm not sure where. And what I'm trying to do is find the ideal position where this is dead smooth. And it goes down. It's not catching, it just sort of glides on or over the work. It's sort of almost there, but I can't quite locate it. And of course, as I move up and down, the pen angle changes slightly, so it does tend to wander. There we go, we've knocked that off a little bit. Well, that's good. Button 109, welcome to the stream and thank you very much for that. That's very kind of you. <laughs> Just doing some shading to the basic body at the moment before I put some more uh, some more of the dots on, which I might get round to this evening. Um... Well, I, yeah, got a bit more on this leg to do, and then I'll put some uh, some some of the dots on. Then I've got more shading to go over the top of that. But the shading helps me see where the dots are supposed to go as well, because uh, the ones on the side of the face have to be angled slightly different. Have you never um, seen pyrography like this before, uh, Matten 109? bunch of muscles around here on the cat and trying to I've got to work out where the shadows go at various points as, as we get into the deeper shadows here it curves more that way as you come up you get this curve that way which is sort of underneath the muscle group
A little bit darker, I think. <laughs> well, that's Junior. Junior is asleep. We've been working, cat. Uh, been doing some paperwork this afternoon, and uh, writing a letter specifically. And I've got a few different drafts of it, uh, and which are on the floor over there. And of course, the cat has to go and lay on the paper. Don't know what it is about cats. Well, go and lay on the thing on the stuff that you're doing. And I don't, at one time I thought it was just because you were there and they said I wanted your attention, so they were laying on the stuff where you were working to get your attention. But um, I haven't been working on those papers for a couple of hours or more now, and yet Junior is laid on them. So now this is a blend really, um, this is, I don't want a, a, the shadow wants to be a graduation from dark through to no shadow at all. So I don't really want an edge on it, you just want to sort of transition without noticing it from the dark through to the light. So this is, um, this is a blend I'm doing here, or graduation. So dealing with the different different parts of the wood, like there's a knot hole there, or a, what would have been a branch perhaps, you know, which is what a knot is. Um, and it, because the wood direction is different to elsewhere, it um, changes colour differently. I guess there's a pussy cat moving around on top of the papers again. Bit of a big pussy cat, I think. But now I'll bring this dark edge up here as well. Because it, of course, curves around the front. And if the lighting is all on the front, then the side here is going to be dark. rather white around here. I'm not doing a snow leopard. Okay, that's bright enough to be a highlight. Then implies that this around here wants to be darker now. I do have to be, I am being a little bit careful because when I put the dots on, the dots will make it look overall darker. So 
So it's probably time to put some dots on. Switch the pen, turn the heat down. Because the finer pen will uh, uh, will be a lot hotter at the same temperature, the same temperature, the same setting. Get something on the screen in front of me. Okay. Right, now then, is this pen okay? Gotta be careful it's not too hot, otherwise I will immediately have a problem. Um of it getting too dark. Now then, we've got <laughs> He's got fur. So the edges aren't perfect. But right. Um, I've got to try and do all the time when I'm painting these dots is get, try and make sure that I'm doing them in the right direction. Um, so. So I'm trying to follow the fur direction because that way. It looks more natural. Kind of surprised, I mean, look, I've looked at a couple of reference pictures and kind of surprised how things like that are broadly similarly on both sides of the eye. It's kind of um, interesting why that happens, not why it happens, but that it happens. Um, and roughly this, this sort of striping effect around here also occurs. One of the interesting things um, with cats is the whiskers. Oh, when you get cats that are like this with, with black, um, the whiskers come out of the center of a dot. And uh, Theo's wanders around occasionally, who's a ginger kitten. Um, he's got black dots on his, his muzzle as well. And he, he's got the occasional black um, Whisker, it's never a white whisker or a greyish whisker, it's, it's white, it's black, jet black, and that comes out the centre of a black dot. Um, he doesn't have any black whiskers that come out of a not black dot. It's, um, I mean, obviously the black is the pigment, but and that kind of explains why the hair is, because the dot is just hair and the whisker is just a longer hair, but it is interesting. But this cat particularly has got white whiskers coming out the middle of black dots. So that theory goes out the window, I guess. 
nearly. Oh, it's kind of daunting um, having a canvas <laughs> and you're putting black dots on it and they're unerasable. Now I'm not, I'm not trying to make them circles. I am specifically trying uh, to do the opposite of that, I guess. So they're like little tiny lines. Um, and they are sort of being done irregularly. Now if I shrink them in that sort of direction, they tend to make them look like they're going around the corner. Which, on the real cap, they are, but <laughs> on two-dimensional object, they can't go around corners, but you know what I mean. Hopefully, anyway. Now I'm totally making up this as I go along in terms of where the dots are. Whilst I have reference pictures, there is absolutely no way I am copying the real dots. They're all the real spots, I suppose they're not dots, but um, it would just, well, I suppose it could be done. Um, but there is no real point in doing it. Almost every cat will have different markings, so you know to say which particular cat it is that you're, uh, you're doing. Um. I was about to describe these as hairy dots, um, but that's what they are. <laughs> um, not an analogy, that's what they actually are. The hair, dots in hair. Um, mm. Now there's one thing about using a tool like this as opposed to the shader which I was using not so long ago and that is this tends to sort of 
melt its way into the wood so you get more of a texture when you're using these sorts of pens than when you're using the shaders. The shaders tend to be flat and the texturing that you seem to get from it, like here for example, which you, you, there is a sort of a texture there, um, is because of the way in which you know the, the lines have been heated um, or the pen has been moved. It's, there is a very slight surface disruption there over the normal wood, but nothing like as strong or as deep as these are. So you have to be kind of careful not to dig in with this sort of tool. You've got to try and really hold it just above the surface. Unless, of course, what you're after is that precise sort of indented look. Now it is quite difficult as well because um, I want these to be black and that kind of means that the wood does shrink away quite much anyway from it. So um, whilst I'm not digging in it, it is still creating that, that, that sort of deep I need to do is just come along the edge of here just with sort of a shaky edge a little bit. So I'm just kind of scribbling a little bit on the edge because it's not a straight line. Yeah, it's not, I mean, I have kind of have got a straightish sort of line on this edge and it isn't straight. Um, it's, um, of course, again, it's fur. I'm just kind of hinting at, the, at having a not very smooth edge. That needs a little, uh, needs a little bit of shading on that, but we'll come back to it. Right, now then, these are going to be the awkward ones here. We're going to have to turn the heat down again. Because I want these black, but I don't want them that black. I want them to look black without actually being black. <laughs> Wolfie, thank you very much for the host. That's very kind of you. You've been watching a comedy show, a Dutch comedy show. Oh, okay. Well, welcome to the stream. As you can see, we're starting to put on the dots. Now, these are on the side, so I've got to try and keep them sort of elongated. Just do some of that with the with the shader. Um, what I probably will do here is. There is a heck of a lot of dots and I'm probably not going to put them all on. <laughs> Just because there is so many. Um, but from the perspective of an image like this, I don't really need to. It doesn't add anything to put you know, thousands of dots on. 
uh, because you almost immediately recognise it as the leopard and then the dots have done the job. And they're coming out a bit brown, I want them darker, so I'm just turning the heat up a bit. Now, I, you can get them darker by keep I mean, if, if you got the brown by going over and over and over. But one of the things about doing that is it, they still they, they still appear brown. So this is one of those times where turning the heat up and trying to do it in one pass is actually better. If you then get quite a solid black and you don't get a brown edge. You know what? That way. I was reminding myself for direction. So the fur radiates kind of from here. And so I've really got to, oops, sorry, I'm going to do them, saying sorry to the camera. Uh, really got to do the dots in the, um, in the fur direction. And do my best not to be as regular as that looks, which was totally unintended. Patterns are random, they're intended to be random. That's what gives the camouflage. Your steam controller refuses to work. Oh dear. Is it plugged in? <laughs> Might seem obvious, but sometimes... Sometimes the obvious is uh, not obvious. And is it plugged into the right thing? Human beings really like patterns and they really they're really bad at being random. And I'm doing I'm I'm sort of showing that. I'm looking at the reference pictures and they are kind of in line, so I'm not too bad, but...
telling me that that needs to be darker down there. It's too light an area for that particular shading. A lot of shadow just under there. And getting, getting the colour right can be a challenge. <laughs> Never mind Wolfie, you can watch me instead. Well, for a while at least you can watch me instead. And the dots don't, they're not always single dots, sometimes they merge together because they're close enough, some are larger and, and all sorts of things. So, plenty of scope to do any kind of thing you want in terms of uh, how these are, how the dots look. I may need to go back and rework some of them just to make them look like where they are on the face of the uh, of the cat. What I should do some is right on the edge there. As they go right around the edge of the fur. I need to do more shading on that face at the moment. That's too flat. Much too flat. I knew when I put the dots on, I probably would see something uh, along the lines of um, of that. Just Productions that way.
Yeah, a little more shady. But that's something not for now. I'm kind of, I would have kind of thought that putting the dots in would be sort of the fun part, but to be honest, it's kind of nerve wracking a little bit just because you've got, you know, you've got all these really dark edges, and um, it's, you know, it's, it's a really dark sort of. You, you've got no choice. Once you put the pen down, you've got the, you've got the dot, and um, there's no going back. Some strategies like that I can use with, uh, with trading to sort of imply sort of a fold of skin, you know, sort of coming. So you got like a, a straight edge because the the dot sort of goes into the fold of fur that's there. few of the dots here on the leg are really elongated like this along sort of a curved path I mean all the dots are is camouflage of course so that they can sneak up amongst grasses and things like that on their prey Or in this case, he's sneaking up on you. Now they look too dark for the area that's around them, so I need to darken that edge and um, there needs to be a lot less contrast between these and the, and the background fur, but we're getting there. That really ought to be dark enough there that that disappears into it. 
So I'm obviously going to have to darken this down again afterwards. Because otherwise I'm going to actually have to put dots in there and they'd, they'd be seen because obviously these are, these are darker than that is. One leg done. <laughs> Can relax a little bit. <laughs> That's a bit of it done. Uh, I may put the odd uh, extra doll in afterwards. Um, hmm. <sighs> right, next one. Incidentally, if you want to uh, draw really, really fine lines with pyrography, and you can with a pen like this, then what you need is a wood which is really quite hard. Um, most of the white woods aren't, so the pen digs in. But if you, uh, certain cases like here, which is part of a tree branch, uh, it is. Uh, but uh, if you um, you get, and I suppose something like mahogany, which is a quite a hard wood, although it's quite dark. But that would be, um, you get extremely sort of fine lines.
I'm going to go back and colour them in. So sometimes I outline stuff. Sort of that direction, and just again looking at where the fur is. Can you always keep going in the fur direction? Because um, there will be sort of texture marks with this. Always will be, even on uh, in even really hard areas. And if they're in the direction of the fur, then it looks okay. If they're in the wrong direction, your brain goes, hang on a minute, something's wrong. If you just bought a new one, then take it back, uh, Wolfie, if it's not working. I'm going to try and avoid going in there, so I'm going to have to make that really black. Wrong direction. That ah, direction.
Oh, it's Sunday today. I've just realised I've got to go back to work tomorrow. Oh well. That works quite nicely. Hmm. Must be a little bit wider. Using dark shapes a little bit to trick your eyes a little bit as to just where it is on the curve. Just move some room for the pussy cat. Just bear with me a second, I'll be back in a moment. I guess since you've already been licking it, eh, we better put it on the floor, pussy cat. There you go. You're licking at the butter. There was a plate just over there on, on top of something which had cheese biscuits with butter and cheese on them. And Junior is busy licking the butter off the cheese biscuits. So I figured I'd better put it on the floor before he drops them on the floor and coating the floor in butter. And now he's eating the cheese. Cats like cheese. In case you didn't know that. A sizable patch here.
Really, for no other reason, I just felt like it. Oh, that shadow there would be really nice to get actually into onto that cat. Uh, which bit is it? Is it my hand? Where is it? It is my hand, isn't it? It is my hand, but that sort of shadow there would be really good to get in. So that's what I want to try and do on that leg. And I guess bring it up the side of the face like that. Oh, that's a really good illustration. Pretty I can't snapshot that. That's what I'm after. Okay, I must remember that. <laughs> so, now you know what I'm trying to do with the picture. So that's way too bright. Way, way, way too bright. Um, that is as well, but... Um, that really wants to go dark. That wants to go black like the background that wants to go way darker and I need to bring it up here as well darkish almost to well not quite as much as that but really dark up across there to get that sort of um, look there and if I angle it like this is just round there you're gonna get that really elongated face uh, not um, muzzle look it's a real good illustration right okay so now i know what i'm doing and if i can't remember maybe somebody will mention put your hand up to the camera and, <laughs> and shady uh that's going to be it for this evening um we're coming up to nine o'clock i've done as much on the leg as i want to put dots on i don't think there's any need to put lots and lots and lots on i could do and I may put an odd one in at some point, but I think that looks okay. So I might work on that leg, get that to what I was uh, trying to uh, trying to achieve. Sorry, I'm looking at the picture over there. I should be looking at you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get that. I want to get that down to what you've just seen. Bring it up there, and then maybe put some more dots on the face. Got to get the shading in because otherwise that face looks too flat with all those dots. It's really hard to get the perfect dot shape for me. Might be for somebody else, might not be for somebody else. But especially as I go over the top, it's going to become um, quite difficult as well. Uh, and then we've got the ears to fill in. Um, so, well, just said, odd of the day is that, that leg next, really darken it down. Down, down, down. Quite a lot. Uh, we'll see what it looks like. That will probably take quite a bit of the stream next time. So we'll have a look at doing that tomorrow. Tomorrow's stream. Hopefully it goes... Okay, can be on. Won't be anything happening to stop it. I intend to start as soon as I can after 7pm UK time. That's on GMT at the moment. But it is a variable time. It's, uh, I have a busy time at work. This is when we do month-end processing because I work in a finance area. And that means that sometimes I have to work late. I have to work late and then I have to get some meals. It sometimes delays the start a little bit. But I'm going to try and keep it as close to 7 as I can. So thank you for watching. If you consider pushing at least the follow button up there, um, that would then let you get Twitch notifications when I'm live. You'll be able to see me in your nice following screen and you come back and see some more Out of the Dark. With that, thank you for watching. See you on the next stream. Bye for now.